I'm David Tillman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about ginkgo biloba. What it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Ginkgo biloba, also called, referred to as ginkgo or maidenhair, is one of the oldest species of trees on earth. Scientists consider it a living fossil, dating back some 270 million years. It has continued to survive even after major extinction events. Ginkgo trees can grow to 130 feet. Some ginkgo trees in China are thought to be over 2,000 years old. And a 3,000 year old tree reportedly stands in the Chinese province of Shangong. Four ginkgo trees survived the atomic explosion in Hiroshima, only 1130 meters from the bomb's epicenter. Ginkgo biloba has used, been used in medicine in China for several millennia. In the oldest Chinese Materia Medica, which dates back to 2800 BC, ginkgo biloba is recommended for asthma, swelling of the hands and feet, coughs, vascular disorders, aging and for the brain. An extract of ginkgo leaves called EGB761 is standardized to 24% flavon glycosides and 6% terpenes. This ginkgo extract modulates neurotransmitters and protects brain cells from brain cell degeneration. It increases blood vessel microcirculation that's blood flow in the smallest of the blood vessels in your brain. And it has antioxidant activity. Ginkgo biloba boosts brain health and function in several ways, but two in particular stand out. First is cerebral circulation. Ginkgo boosts several brain functions by improving blood circulation in the brain. A study at the Department of Radiology at John Hopkins University School of Medicine used, using uh, MRIs to measure blood flow in nine healthy men. The MRIs were done before and after the men took ginkgo biloba extract, 60 milligrams twice a day for four weeks. The study concluded that overall, all regions of the subject's brains saw a significant change in cerebral blood flow after using ginkgo. And the second way that ginkgo helps the brain is cognition and mental performance. Ginkgo is, is well known as a memory booster in the nootropics community. Studies have shown that ginkgo helps attention, mood, and processing speed. Now, one large study at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, was conducted with 262 healthy adults. This six-week, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial had volunteers taking 180 milligrams of ginkgo extract or a placebo for six weeks. The subjects were put through several standardized tests. At the end of the six-week trial, those using ginkgo showed significant improvement in verbal and visual recall and memory. Now research from hundreds of studies has shown that ginkgo biloba will improve memory and cognition, it will increase reaction time, restore the availability of dopamine and other neurotransmitters, improve cerebral blood flow, reduce stress, boost mood, help repair brain cells, and act as an antioxidant to eliminate free radicals. Ginkgo improves circulation, including in the brain. Thinking, reaction time, energy, and memory should improve. Cold hands and feet are often an indication of poor circulation, and ginkgo could help. Ginkgo has a reputation for helping reduce the symptoms of tinnitus. And it's also developed a good reputation for helping erectile dysfunction, or ED, in men. Many neurohacker, neurohackers report it takes several weeks of continued use of ginkgo 
to experience all the benefits of this healing herb. Age-related cognitive decline is expected as a normal part of aging in our society. And this decline can lead to difficulty performing everyday activities like concentrating on what your loved one is saying or remembering to attend a family function you've been looking forward to for months. This decline will affect your quality of life and affect your mood. And the thing is, it's happening to younger and younger people. But many of us, including me in the Nootropics community, refuse to accept cognitive decline as standard. Now, I want to note, there's one important consideration that I found in the research in ginkgo biloba. Some of the findings have been contradictory, some indicating that ginkgo doesn't work. But the overwhelming impression I got from looking into the research was that ginkgo biloba takes a while to work. Often it can take many months of supplementation to see results. And extracts work far better than plain powdered ground ginkgo. So there's plenty of studies on ginkgo biloba. I've got a study on how ginkgo improves cognition. Another one on how ginkgo biloba improves quality of life. If you'd like to see links to these studies, go to the article on Nootropics Expert. Click on the link below this video. It'll take you to the transcript. And I've got links through to the clinical studies backing up what we're talking about here on ginkgo. Got another study on how ginkgo improves attention and memory. Again, that's on the website. Recommended dosage of ginkgo biloba is 40 milligrams three times a day. But daily dosage can range from 120 milligrams to 600 milligrams depending on the disorder being treated. Many ginkgo biloba products claim that a minimum of four weeks is required to achieve a boost in focus, memory, and concentration. There is the potential for an increased risk in bleeding when ginkgo biloba is used with, along with antiplatelet agents, like things like aspirin and anticoagulants like Coumadin and Lovenox or herbs with Coumarin constituents like um, angelica, anise, uh, capsicum, celery, chamomile, clove, danchin, garlic, ginger, horseradish, licorice, onion, papaya, and red clover. Hypomania has been, report, been reported in patients with depression when ginkgo leaf extract was used in combination with Prozac, St. John's wort, and melatonin. Ginkgo leaf extract can also alter insulin secretion. So if you're taking insulin, you should monitor your glucose levels closely. There's also been reports of seizures associated with ginkgo use with people using medication used to lower seizure threshold. And I've got a list of these medications on the website. Go to Nootropics Expert and search for ginkgo and look down in the side effects section and I've got a list of all the medications that you could get in trouble with combining with ginkgo, including penicillins, uh, Welbutrin, um, even methylphenidate or Ritalin. Now ginkgo should be used with caution during pregnancy due to the potential for increased bleeding risk. Ginkgo should be avoided during, during breastfeeding due to the lack of sufficient data on this, you know, on this herb. Ginkgo leaf produce is produced from green picked leaves grown on plantations specifically developed for pharmaceutical purposes. Ginkgo biloba extract is available in capsules, tablets, concentrated liquids, sublingual sprays, bars, and cola drinks. Standardized product should contain at least 24% flavin glycosides and 6% terpenes. The products most commonly used in clinical trials are ginkgo biloba standardized extract GB761 and LI1370. 
So my nootropics expert recommendation for ginkgo biloba extract is up to 120 to 240 milligrams a day. And that's my report on ginkgo. If you want to see links on the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for ginkgo. Or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles and all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience using ginkgo, go to my article on Nootropics Expert and leave it in the comments section at the bottom of the article. If you want to see more videos on the popular nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.